In this problem, we're given three points, and we're asked to find the parabola that goes through these points. So just to kind of visualize what's happening, we have the point negative 1, 11. So back one up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And the point 1, 1, so forward one, up one. And the point 3, 7, 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What we're trying to do is to find the equation of the parabola that would just fit um, in through these three data points. So um, now the equation of a parabola usually has an x squared term and an x term and a constant, and that's how you get the output value y. So to figure out the equation of a particular parabola, you have to find three things, a, b, and c. And we're going to use these three pieces of information, the three points, in order to find those three unknowns. So we're going to get a system of three equations and three unknowns. If I just substitute in here, if I substitute in negative 1 for x, I know that 11 should come out for y. And so that tells me that this equation, see, negative 1 squared is 1, so we get 1a. And uh, b times negative 1 would be negative b plus c is equal to y, which is 11. The next equation that we get, if we plug in 1 for x, and we know that 1 should come out for y, 1 for x here will give us a plus b plus c, and we know that 1 should come out for y in that case. And finally, our third point says, if you plug in 3 for x, 7 should come out for y. So 3 squared is 9, so we'll get 9a plus 3 times b is 3b plus c is equal to the y value, which is 7. So this is a system of three equations and three unknowns, which is great. We have three pieces of information, three equations, and as long as those are independent pieces of information, then we should be able to find the three unknowns, A, B, and C. Now when you're solving an equation, the idea is to turn that equation into one whose solution is more obvious. When you're solving a system, the idea is to turn your system of equations into a system of equations whose solution is more obvious. So what we want to do is we want to slowly change this system in ways that make the system simpler but that don't change the solutions to the system. Now if we think about it, there are really three things that we can do to change the system without changing its solutions. First, we could always write the equations in a different order. So we could switch any two equations. That won't change the solutions. We still have the same piece of information. They're just listed in a different order. So the conclusion would still be the same. So switch any two equations. Because you could switch two, then you could switch you could switch all three up, right? Just by doing doing a simple switch. So switch any two equations. Those are those are the legal legal moves. Maybe we'll think about it sort of like a chess game. Things that you can do and things that you can't do. Well one thing you can do is, is change the order. So another thing you could do is you could multiply any equation all the way through by some constant. So you could multiply any equation, multiply any equation through by a non-zero constant. Of course, if you multiply an equation on both sides by zero, you introduce a bunch of solutions that weren't there before. So we don't want to do that, but we could multiply through by a non-zero constant. Um, since dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, we could also divide by a non-zero number because the reciprocal of a non-zero number would also be um, non-zero, and so we could um, multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So multiply slash divide is okay. That won't change the solutions, right? Like in this equation, if a minus b plus c equals 11, then 2a minus 2b plus 2c would be equal to 22. Multiplying all the way through leaves the um, solutions alone. So the third thing that we can do is we can add and um, also subtract since we can multiply by any non-zero constant. We can add any equation to any other. The idea in that case is that if I were to say um, add this number to that number, I've added something to one side of this second equation as long as I add the same thing to the other side, I'll be okay. But the number I added to the left-hand side is the same as 11. So I could just add 11 to the right-hand side. So you can add any equation to another equation. In fact, let's say it this way. Since you can add and you can multiply an equation through, you could add, add any non-zero multiple of one equation 
to another. So we want to use these legal moves in order to make the system um, a little bit easier to read off the solution. What we'll do first is we'll basically try to turn this into a system that has an equation of one equation that has three unknowns and then two equations that only have two unknowns. Then we'll be back to a case that we already kind of know how to solve anyway. So what I want to do is probably try to use this first equation and by taking multiples of the first equation and adding them to the second equation I want to eliminate these A's and then what I'll do is I'll eliminate these B's, the B below the second B, and then we'll have a system, um, once we do that, these numbers will all kind of change a little bit, but this last equation will only involve C, so I can read off what C is, and then I can substitute that back up into what's left of the second equation, and I can solve for B. And then I can substitute B and C up into what's into this thir first equation and figure out what um, A must be. So I'm gonna, gonna sort of get this into sort of a staircase form, as I do that, as I add one equation to another equation, the coefficients and the numbers on the left on the right hand side will change, but eventually we'll have this kind of staircase. Now, this is this actually looks sort of like a marching band formation where you have um, one column is one body ahead of the next column over, which is one body ahead. This kind of marching formation is called echelon form. It's kind of related to the word escalator or stairs. So it's kind of a stair step form. Once we get an echelon form, then it's easy for us to um, back substitute, which is what we described. We find one variable, we substitute that back into the next equation up. We find the next variable, we substitute those in the next equation up, and so on. So then we back substitute. Okay, let's let's try those three steps in this particular example. Okay, looking at these equations, what I see is that if I were to subtract um, the first equation from the second equation, then the a in that second equation would disappear. Now it's okay to subtract, right, because that's like multiplying the first equation by negative one and adding it to the second equation. Also, if I were to subtract nine times the first equation from the third equation, then I would also make the a disappear in that one. So that would be a step towards that echelon form. So just so you can see what I'm going to do, I'm going to take I'm going to take negative equation 1 and add it to equation 2 and use that to replace or to make my new equation 2. I'm also going to go ahead and do negative 1 times equation 1 and add that to equation 3 to make a new equation 3. So when I'm done, after I've done these two things, I'll have another system with three equations and three unknowns, but it'll be a little bit simpler. Let's see what we get. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy with, notice that the only equations I'm changing are equation 2 and equation 3. I'm happy with my first equation, so a minus b plus c equals 11. Now I'm getting a new second equation though. I'm getting it by taking negative 1 times the first equation and adding it to the second equation, or essentially subtracting equation 1 from equation 2. a minus a is 0, that's why I decided to do it. b minus minus b is 2b, c minus c is 0, and 1 minus 11 is negative 10. I was also going to get a new equation 3 by taking negative 9 times the first equation and adding it to the third equation. Negative 9a added to 9a is 0, so we lose our a's. Negative 9 times uh, negative b is positive 9b plus 3b makes 12b. And negative 9 times c is negative 9c plus c makes negative 8c. And negative 9 times 11 is negative 99 plus 7 is negative 92. Okay, so you notice that I've put in sort of the first step in the staircase. My plan now is to eliminate this next step to the staircase. And you remember one of our legal operations is to multiply or divide any equation through by um, a non-zero number. So I could if I wanted to work with smaller numbers I could go ahead and do that at this point because these two numbers here are divisible by 2, so it would make it nicer if I divide, if I multiply through by 1 half or divided both sides by 2. These numbers are all divisible by 4, so it would make it nicer if I divided both sides by 4. So just to show you how that works, I'm, just, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take 1 half of equation 2, and that's gonna make a new equation 2. And I'm gonna take 1 half, 1 fourth of equation 3, and that's gonna be my new equation 3. So if we come up here where there's a little bit of space, we're not doing we're not touching our first equation it's still the same but we decided to take one half of both sides of this equation that tells us that b is negative five 
and <coughs> then if we if we uh, divide both sides of this equation by four, we have three b minus two c, and four goes in there. Let's see, four times twenty would be eighty, so we've got an extra three four. So uh, so we've got uh, negative twenty three now. And this problem just made the number smaller. Now the next step in going to echelon form is to eliminate that 3b there. And now that the numbers are simpler, I can see I can just do negative 3 times equation 2, add that to equation 3, and that will make a new equation 3 that doesn't have a b in it. So these are just little notes that I'm making to myself so I remember what I did. So that if I go back, I can see what I did. It kind of helps if I make a mis uh, like an arithmetic mistake. It helps me to catch that. So again, the only, the only equation we're changing is equation 3. We're happy with equation 1. And we're happy with equation 2. And now we're taking uh, negative 3 times this and adding it to that. Negative 3b plus 3b is no b's. Negative 3 times 0 just makes negative 2c. And uh, negative 3 times negative 5 is 15. 15 and negative 23 is negative 8. Now you can see I have this I have this in the staircase form, right? When it's in the staircase form, it's easy to find the solution. So this last equation only has one variable in it, so that one's easy to solve. Just divide both sides by negative 2, and you find that c is 4. Now our second to the last equation didn't have a c in it. In general, it could have a c in it, but that's no problem because we could substitute in what c was. In this case, can, since c didn't even appear, I can just read off that b is negative 5. And finally, the top equation says a minus b, but negative negative 5 is a plus 5, plus c, and we know c is 4, is equal to 11. So a, a plus 9 is 11, so a must be equal to 2. And that tells me what the solution to this problem is. I'm looking for this problem that goes through those points, and I figured out that the, it must have the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and now I use that to find three equations. I solve them, and now I can see that the equation must be 2x squared plus um, b, oops, so that's going to be minus 5x um, plus c, and c turned out to be 4. So that's the equation of the parabola that goes through those three points. Now to check it, we probably, could, we probably ought to plug in each of those points just to see. If we plug in negative 1 for x, negative 1 squared is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, and then, uh, so we have 2, and then negative 5 times negative 1 would be 5. 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 4 is 11. Good, so when you plug in negative 1 for x, 11 comes out for y. If you plug in 1 for x, we have 2 minus 5 plus 4. That's uh, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, so 1 came out, good. And finally, if you plug in 3, 3 squared is 9, 2 times 9 is 18, minus 15 is 3, 3 plus 4 is 7. So, yeah, we've, we've double-checked now. We know this is the correct parabola.